Now, I, 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 started, I, started, I started not researching this, and Michelle said, what are you doing this week? And I said, I'm doing the archaeology of chocolate. And within a couple of minutes, she got all the information for me. And I just thought, that, that's very good. And there is actually lots of information about the archaeology <coughs> of chocolate. Um, and those are the wonderful uh, beans of the cocoa uh, tree. Um, and the best beans, uh, which are in pods, are to be found about 20 metres up. Um, and when we think about chocolate, we need to think about something that goes um, very deep into time, as all the different food substances we've been looking at have a history. I just didn't think we'd, I just didn't think this would work, but what we have, but it has. So, um, obviously, when I presented this um, on Tuesday. Um, with, with the Skype class now, I've got one screen with my notes and one screen with my images, um, but um, I'm not too keen on carrying a, a, another computer screen in with me, so what we're going to do, we can do a few of the images and the rest of it's going to be from my notes, which are also um, on the screen. So when, when we think about um, chocolate, um, we think about Central America, but no, we don't, we think about South America. And we also think about North America. Um, we think about uh, chocolate um, itself, cocoa. And the word um, chocolate actually comes from Central America, so everything I'm saying is um, correct. And it's, 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 the word is so close, so the modern day word chocolate, um, that it obviously gives a sign of its um, pedigree, the sense of this, this whole product being a staple, being uh, more than just something that you'd consume and drink, uh, something that you'd use to appease the gods, something you'd use for trade, uh, something you would use um, in the course of marriage. The husband would offer you cocoa beans, and then you'd offer him cocoa beans. Uh, apparently, um, chocolate is seen as an aphrodisiac. That's why Michelle doesn't give me any... Shut up, you. Not with you around. <coughs> so, you gr started grounded already. <laughs> you know. Um, do you know? Do you know this growl that you do, right? Um, you know this growl you do. You know when you're um, at meals. Do you like a food in your mouth? You go, Alan, you'll sit next to him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, things fly around. <laughs> Throw the bones over your shoulder. Yeah. Do you know, I mean, I go medieval-ish. Yeah, medieval -ish. Yeah, medieval -ish. Yeah. So this, uh, this is actually from the Mayan world. Uh, this goes back 1,000, no, 1,400 years ago. Um, and actually, um, <coughs> chocolate itself, cocoa, um, is so important to the Olmec civilization, which is be before the Maya, um, it's very import important to the Mayan civilization. It's very important to the Aztec civilization. Um, and then it gets very important to the Western civilization uh, when people start consuming lots of chocolate and they add something called sugar to it and it starts rotting our teeth. Doesn't it, Ellen? So here we go. You're trying to defend having chocolate, aren't you? You are? No, we're not actually going to defend it. Oh, okay. It looks like they're offering it to a cat, but still. <coughs> it looks like a glass of Guinness. <laughs> Shut up! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, so this, 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 <laughs> this wonderful Mayan um, <coughs> frieze, a wonderful Mayan portrait, wonderful Mayan fresco um, is obviously um, to portray the offering um, of cocoa liquid of that froth the froth is really important the froth is overflowing uh, and obviously um, there's some cake like things there that you might put the put might put the chocolate on or the froth it's not really not really sure of that but um, and these are the cocoa ponds so it's all in here um, so this is the ground down um, this is the ground down bean itself and it's obviously gone through the process and you go through all this 
Okay, and that there is a symbol for Coca-Cola. They actually had a symbol for it. Uh, so, we, so we know in their society uh, that this, this, was, this was very important. And, and in my notes it says a lot about um, the mayor seeing it as an aphrodisiac, but the Aztecs saw it as a lot more important than that. Um, I, I had a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a sort of argument on Tuesday. Uh, the, the, effect, uh, the effect that if I have any amounts of chocolate uh, is that I have a huge high and then an absolutely incredible low. Uh, there are times I can feel so low that uh, the S word comes into it. So it's best that I don't have chocolate at all. So chocolate gives me a massive low, but to lots of other people it gives people a massive high. Um, and, um, and whether that's good or not, um, it, um, it ties in with these cultures, these worlds, this landscape, these Americas. Now, I don't like, um, I don't like referring to the new or the old world. Uh, to me, the new world, America, is the old world in lots of ways, because they've got lots of things going on there, which, which uh, very much before us. If it wasn't for Central America, we wouldn't have potato. Um, we wouldn't have um, tomato, okay? We wouldn't have chili. And chili and chocolate, cocoa, go very well together, apparently. And in fact, all the skills about blending cocoa and herbs, <coughs> as we did the other week, uh, all originated in the Americas many years before we're thinking about it, you know, people get, people get so excited, don't they? Oh, let's add a little bit of chilli to the chocolate, oh, it's wonderful, and all the rest of it. But this was actually um, invented, all this type of stuff um, came from the mindsets of people um, across the Americas. Um, and we think that some of the most earliest people to actually use cocoa <laughs> as a staple um, economy were in fact not people from Central America, but people, people from Ecuador. Um, Ecuador being in South America. So this, this, whole, this whole sense um, of the use of cocoa uh, is, is very important to understanding the landscape. What were you going to say? Um, what were you saying, Ellen? Oh, Panama Hats and Mexico. Pardon? Panama Hats. Panama hats. Perhaps the only thing I know about Panama. But I won't say any more than Panama. Panama canals in Ecuador as well. Oh, shut up, you tart! What? Panama canals. In Look, Ecuador just as well. stop it. <laughs> you, you told me to say it. Do you know what raffle prize you've won this week? Not that horrible little cock. <laughs> 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 You have won this. Oh, no. You have actually won this. That's it's lovely. a lovely little prize. It is. It's very nice. <laughs> <laughs> this, 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 was, this was offered That's and given with prize. great love. Yeah. Does the butterfly come off? It's not the get that off. No, just give it to Ginny and she hasn't had a raffle prize in ages. Right. This is the symbol for Coca Cola. But if you're a posh chef, you obviously don't want to be so yeah, C is pronounced with a K, cacao, but that's in the Latin. But anyway, we'll call it cocoa. The cocoa bean. The pod here, okay, this is the pod. And that's the symbol. That's a hieroglyphic symbol. This is a hieroglyphic symbol in the Maya, and it's very descriptive. And you can't. It's not for us to question the mayor, all right? So that's a symbol for chocolate. Yes, cocoa, yes. That's a tattoo I should have got done years ago. <laughs> Why? Because I've like, got a few tattoos and it's good, I love chocolate. Yeah. So, you know. You could have had that done. Yeah. For it's when people have um, tattoos on them in foreign languages and it says, I am an arse or something. Yeah. Or bollocks. Yes. Oh, I got what that Apparently, it's on the wrong part of your body. Yeah, it says testicles because they haven't got a word for bollocks. We can get, <laughs> we can get Dennis to oh. substantiate that, unless he's in charge. It's my favourite swear word. So Dennis, have a look at this symbol. Go and confirm. Go and show Dennis, quick. Know the symbols. This is Japanese, I didn't hear. 
but yeah. some of them there, yeah. Although it won't call same as Chinese, those ones. So I, I don't know those. Yeah. <laughs> Good, thank God for that. <laughs> <laughs> so I know it's probably the same to me. So I just, you know. Do, do you know what, rebels or what? Yeah. Uh, now. <laughs> you just don't swim in the international stuff. Oh. I don't swim at all. <laughs> I, no one wants to see what's on you. <laughs> Especially me. Oh, right, okay. Right, okay. Um, th this, is, this is evidence further. Uh, the, these are actually little coffee beakers. I, I, look, sizes and everything, okay? I, I'm, I'm try, I'm, I'm, oh, hang on, I can't enlarge it. But there is, an, there is an article that I'll be doing, and we'll look at that. So hopefully it'll be a bit larger on that. But... Right, okay. Um, do you know, Ellen, can I just make a, make a sort of observation? Kathy was the um, rompous um, well, radical, rebel. right? Well, and now you've taken over. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So these actually come from um, the site of um, um, uh, Pueblo uh, Bonito, which is um, the one, one, wonderful Anastasi... Um, Native Americans, they're called Indians, but that's Anastasia. Um, and then basically, these, these, uh, the civilization existed in New Mexico. Now, this is in North America. So the point is, um, we, the, buildings, the buildings at Chaco Canyon, Pueblo Benito, which is this site. Again, I can't enlarge it for some reason because it's fixed. Uh, these wonderful sites in New Mexico were, were just abandoned like that. And you had beakers like that with the chocolate still in them, the hot chocolate still in them. It was sometimes, yeah, that's right, sometimes it was cold chocolate liquid or it was hot chocolate liquid. Um, and before you talk, before anyone asked me about this, um, it was fermented, right? Um, but, but I haven't got as far as working out um, if that fermentation created something that was alcoholic. And the answer that I can work out is no. So there's another process of fermentation here, but that's another thing altogether. So um, the evidence of co cocoa, or cacao, if you want to do the Latin pronunciation of it, um, is to be seen all across the Americas, and is to be seen as a trade item, okay? Um, for, for those that might be interested, Alan, right? Um, you could have 10 cocoa beans, and you could have a light and luxury with a prostitute. Um, or, Steve, you can buy a slave for a hundred cocoa beans. I have unlimited nights of passion. Excellent. <laughs> They're all male. <laughs> well, at least I get the housework done. Put me on. Um, Bing, sit there with a the whip. Come on, you missed the whip. Make your sandwiches. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be Jane with the whip anyway. Isn't it? <laughs> You're gonna hit Jane with the whip. Yeah, just show how to use it. You missed Jane, Jane uh, earlier. She was talking about with her whip. Dominatrix. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I'm Oh, hang on, we missed this, Pete. What are you on about a whip? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, my, 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 when I, years ago, right, my, um, years, years ago, my brother bought me back this huge bull whip from Cyprus. Um, and I actually took it into school with me one day, and the teacher took it off me, and I didn't see it for the whole weekend, and she gave it back to me on the Monday. I don't know what that was about. Mm. Okay. Was there any skin attached to the end of it when you had it back? It looked like it had been worn. <laughs> oh dear me. Anyway, um, this is <laughs> this is from the 1650s, and this is when um, this is um, illustrating um, somebody from probably the um, French East India Company um, with somebody of Central American ilk, and somebody from the East as well. Yeah. But this is obviously portraying the widespread trade in cocoa a hundred years after its discovery, or, or you could say rediscovery, its discovery um, by the conquistadors um, after they had sacked and destroyed um, the civilizations in the Americas. Some say uh, within the space of 50 years, 200 million people uh, were dead, uh, thanks to the Spanish and the Portuguese. But that's up for debate disease and all sorts of things. Now, this is, when I, when I go, oh, when I look at my notes, 
this is this is from um, this is from an Aztec codex, but unfortunately, it's not an Aztec codex prepared by the Aztecs. This is an Aztec codex prepared by some kind of a priest um, in the Christian world. Uh, but give or take that, lots of these codices um, about the Aztec world, whether they're done by the Aztecs or whether they're done um, as copies um, by um, by the uh, Christian fraternity. This one is um, showing something very important. Um, it's a yellow liquid. Um, this is the cocoa. And what you do, you've got two beakers um, and two... Um, um, you either have it warm or cold and you're constantly evolving this so that you, cre you create the froth okay and again the froth is really important because the froth is is where all the bitterness is stored and you can actually either take the froth off um, and you can drink the liquid but nevertheless this is bitter so they're adding other things into them to add to the taste um, and this is what this is portraying uh, this is big time, and, and it was introduced into uh, the Western world uh, by the Spanish. And initially, it was seen to be a very bitter drink. And then somebody came up with the fact that if you add honey to it, and you add um, non-refined sugars of whatever um, type, um, it actually gives a, more of a sweeter taste. And that's where our modern-day um, hot chocolate beverage comes from. Um, whilst I was teaching this on Tuesday, Michelle put a thing of hot chocolate in front of me, I was just drinking away and I was fine afterwards, I was as sick as a dog. So that's the effect chocolate has on me. So um, um, so that's where the modern day beverage hot chocolate comes from. Yes, in, in, in my house everybody's got warnings to hide chocolate. Yeah. Um, this is obviously uh, more into the 1700s. Uh, and chocolate itself becomes a staple drink of people throughout Europe. So within 150, 200 years, it's, it's, a, it's a dominant factor in trade throughout Europe. It's a very wealthy dominant factor, uh, but it's a very important dominant factor as well. When you think about Sir Walter Raleigh, and you think about Elizabeth the um, uh, first, who, put, who had really, really bad teeth, and in fact at one point she didn't have any at all, uh, all this to do with sugar and all these introductions from the new world, um, including beverages like chocolate with sugar being added to them, probably assisted to the loss of her teeth. Isn't it called chocolate because it's from the French chocolate? So um, they weren't calling it chocolate then, were they? They used to call it something else. But the, but the, no, the word actually does <coughs> derive from Central America. Oh. That's what my notes tell me. Well, when we come to the word, when we come to the word, I'll show you. I'll, sh I'll show you where it's referred. No, it actually comes from Central America. I disagree with you. My notes. That's what it tells me. There's a form of chocolate with T L at the end. That's it. That was the original name, I think. Yes. Yes. That's right. So he's That's Yeah. That's right. I think that's no, you, it, no, it's fine because it, it, it obviously derived into the French language and that's where we get well, our word today. Yeah, at the end because yeah. it was TL. They weren't adding yeah. milk to it, they were adding sugar to it. Yes. So, anyway, moving on. So, um, let's get the lights on. <laughs> let's not all be in the dark. Uh, by, the, by the way, um, Ellen didn't want me to mention, but... Um, she 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 said because she's one enjoying these classes very much, she's decided to offer to everybody that she'll pay for all the meals um, at Christmas time. Well, that that thanks to Ellen. Very nice, well, yeah. Very, very nice of you. Just when you say the Christmas ho ho ho. No, that's on the nineteenth. Oh, and by the way, I'm turning up in my birthday suit. Bringing cracker. <laughs> right. So, <laughs> actually, do you know for once I'm going to get the whiteboard out? I, you, you haven't seen my whiteboard for a long time. So we haven't, no. I'm going to get it out. You get it out. I'm going to get it out. Don't let anyone stop me. And this is where the word chocolate comes from. Um, 
This word um, C H O C O L A Bingo. So there you go. Bas basically, um, this is the. Uh, that, that's the God of Wisdom. Um, this is the, this is the God of Wisdom to the Aztecs. So. Um, it's it's the word um, this is the Native American word for it with with this um, this above the A um, and it's basically derived directly from the God of Wisdom's name um, and obviously this is where this is the co co of it so that's where it comes from mm -hmm. it, it actually comes from Central America so this actually comes from the, the God bit because the God of Wisdom was quite keen um, on his cocoa seeds because they were given as a gift to the God of Wisdom. And to have wisdom um, probably arrived from the use of chocolate. And now you know. But this is to the Aztecs, where it comes from before, but I'm not sure. Oh, there you go. I, 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 that, that was good to use a whiteboard occasionally. There's nothing wrong with using a whiteboard. So the history of chocolate begins in Mesoamerica, as we know. The word fermented beverages, don't get sort of too much het up on uh, the word fermented um, associated um, with alcohol. Uh, but the fermented beverage, it seemed to be a liquid by most archaeologists looking at the texts and looking at the um, evidence, the, the, um, the, the acids um, associated with the pottery that chocolate um, is found on, or cocoa is found on. So they, they, archaeologists have thought that this is a fermented beverage. But now uh, we believe that it's being consumed as a, as a semi-solid as well, okay, as a, as a chocolate dip rather than a drink, um, a bit like Nutella, except without the sugar. Um, the well, there you go. So... So up until up until not so long ago, up until this year, and up until a few months ago, um, it was believed that, that that it originally derived as a fermented beverage. But the evidence tells us that it was seen and utilised uh, by other peoples throughout America, um, and it, its use is quite wide. And one thing that I've been one thing I've been realising is that when we've been looking at food and, and drink, because we've got cider coming up, but not next week. Next week is, um, uh, is um, fermented fish sauce, uh, which has a putrefying taste and smell. That's what we'll be doing next week. We'll be doing snails next week. And absolute um, skewered mm -hmm. dormice. We'll be doing all that stuff next week. Mm -hmm. And then we've got cider after that. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're, bringing, we're bringing Tommy in. We're bringing, yeah, um, Ellen's bringing some bringing examples some in. Yeah. yeah, what she's going to do is get some rotting fish, stamp it with her feet, get the bacteria in there. Okay. Oh. Um, extra and flavour. Extra flavour, yeah, because Ellen's good. Sweden. Some horrible fish they have. I do, yeah. Oh, yeah. There's nothing stuff. wrong with that. So the Aztecs believed that co uh, cocoa seeds were, were the gift um, to um, and, and from Quetzalcoatl, the god of wisdom. And the seeds once had so much value that they were used as a form of currency across the Americas. So it's being traded all the way across the Americas. And actually, um, when the conquistadors... Uh, were given um, as a gift. Um, these beans, you can imagine that they're looking, thinking, right, where's the gold? Because the the um, uh, Montezuma um, and his Aztec aristocracy couldn't understand that the conquistadors were only interested in gold. So when they were offering them other things, they, 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 they started to become more and more insulted. The thing is, right, by, this is a good point. By offering the conquistadors um, cocoa beans, okay, um, they felt that they were offering cocoa beans to gods because that's who they felt the conquistadors were. So when the uh, conquistadors said, we don't want these beans, 
they, they, they didn't know what to make of it, right? But then they realised they were normal human um, beings from Europe. Um, and it was too late because the Aztec kingdom started to collapse. So the beans are, the beans are instrumental uh, in the collapse of the Aztec world, as much as it was um, for the wealth of the Aztec world. And it could also be said, can it not, that uh, the Pacific region and the likes of the Japanese and the Chinese may have been introduced co to cocoa beans long before the likes of Christopher Columbus, long before uh, Pizarro, long before the conquistadors. So that's another part of the story altogether. And I, I, think, uh, I, I think after that class on Tuesday, it was like, we're going to all start growing cocoa tree, uh, trees in our garden. And I started to say it's just not going to work because uh, they need to be mature. They need to have the right weather conditions, the right soil, the right this and that. And to get the best beans, you need a tree which is 20 metres high, which I don't think would go well in urban Cowbridge, Barry or Antwerp Major. Or for that, for that case, Newport. Um, so, originally prepared as a drink um, in lots of cases and lots of texts, but we've got that new evidence which, is, which has come up recently. And you may add spices and um, a puree um, of corn. Um, it was believed long throughout American society to have um, aphrodisiac powers um, and to give the drinker a great deal of strength. But we know it was seen to be a lot more than that. Even in Mexico today, they have a drink known as um, chilate. Uh, which is a fermented drink similar to what the Aztecs would have drunk, uh, which they add chili and all the different spices in, which tastes completely different from hot chocolate. But when you just toss a little bit of sugar or honey in there, it tastes very similar to hot chocolate. So it doesn't need a lot. Uh, and when you look at the importance of cocoa, uh, even into the modern day and age. For example, did you know, it's a very interesting, strange fact, the American army in the First and the Second World War were being given cocoa beans as part of their rations. Not chocolate, but cocoa, be cocoa beans, which is an unusual thing altogether. Um, and it says here, but actually one thing I missed out, when we were looking at about the meaning, um, it didn't come into the Spanish language first from Central America. It started again, I've screwed that up. It didn't come into the French language first from Central America, um, the word. It came into the Spanish language first and then mutated into the French and then mutated into us. It's quite an interesting word, but the word chocolate isn't far away from the original word, which is quite, which is quite interesting in itself. In, in other words, it's a respected word. So, history. So cultivation and consumption um, was extensive throughout the Mesoamerican, Mesoamericas, um, thanks to the cocoa tree, um, which it's their native of. And the other thing as well as having cocoa trees, it needs to be pollinated by the right beast, beasties. So if you don't have the right beasties, it's not going to be properly pollinated. And you're not going to have your cocoa pods, you're not going to have your cocoa seeds, and you're not going to be able to create your own chocolate which um, Gillian was getting very excited, but I've just crushed her life aims. Sorry, but I love doing that to you. Um, anyway, you have 20 meter tall trees um, and you have the cocoa pods, which are long sheaths, uh, which are usually nearly two foot in length, right? So you can imagine one of these falling on your head. Um, and when you break them open, <laughs> There's a sweet, viscous pulp inside, um, and you usually got about 20 to 40 almond-shaped beans. And that's another point as well. When the conquistadors were offered these beans, they actually felt they, they thought they were almonds. They sort of, they really weren't felt insulted. You know, we're not getting the gold. Likewise, they're thinking, oh my God, Montezuma's thinking, we can't have a piece of gods without beans. What's wrong with him? He doesn't love us anymore. That's what they were thinking, right? So, um, and it's it's all it's all the sweet pulp itself may have been the first thing consumed by human beings, and they they um, decided to use the beans in whatever way. So cocoa pods themselves can range 
in size and colour, what's produced at the end after being ground down be, can be green, purple, can be brown, can be any colour, okay? So the original colour of chocolate doesn't, isn't necessarily brown, it's yellow, um, or green, or purple, or red, it can be any colour. So um, when, you know, when we talk about white chocolate, um, um, we talk about dark chocolate, the original colour is nothing like that at all. Um, and when, when, the, when it's all ground down, it has a smooth taste, as we're probably aware. Um, and evidence suggests that it was, had been fermented and um, the fermentation process um, can be mainly seen as not creating um, an alcoholic beverage. But with other substances added, it can produce an alcoholic beverage. And the idea for all this goes back thousands of years. Not just 3,000 years, not just 4,000 years, but over 5,000 years. The idea, uh, the sense, the purpose of the cocoa pods uh, in the society of the Central Americas takes on its own. It grows in its own natural environment. Some trees, as I've said, can be over 20 metres tall. And that's where the best um, cocoa beans can be recovered from. Trees um, roughly about uh, uh, six or seven metres tall can do the trick. But that's quite a tall tree anyway. Yeah, it's quite tall. So you've got to be able to grow these things. And cocoa trees and plants are well established in, across the Americas. While researchers do not agree about the first domestication of the cocoa tree, the fermented drink seems to be something that seems to arise um, to the hearts of these people. We, we actually, as I've said, we find the chemical signatures associated with the pottery, uh, but we've got new evidence to look at, which we're not going to do yet. So ceramic vessels with the residues um, from <coughs> Olmec sites dates um, for the Olmec sites to cocoa use being as far back as 3,500 years ago. Uh, the Olmecs themselves, as we've already looked previously, come from the landscape of Mexico. And the Pueblo people in the US Southwest, North America, we're seeing that um, their, their love of cocoa, an imported love of cocoa, takes us to um, well beyond a thousand years ago until the extinction of the Pueblo Benito people that seemed to completely disappear. They disappear like that. They build these beautiful cities out of rock and out in the open. Um, and, you know, that would be a wonderful lecture, actually. And they, and when, when archaeologists have found lots of these sort of town and village sites, you know, and the bigger sites, uh, they've actually found the ladder still leading from this floor to the next floor, the food still on the table, uh, the beakers over here, a fire almost looks as if it was just abandoned. People just left. We don't know why. There's no sign. We don't know why they left. There's no dead bodies, no nothing. But cocoa was very important to them. And we see it in the beakers that were left on their tables. So it's, it's, almost, it's almost looking akin to um, what the, the way people would write in North America when the white man got there. Um, they, would, they would write um, along the lines that, um, you know, um, the, 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 the person from the West uh, has, has destroyed our landscape. The only thing they care for is money. Um, and one day, all they'll be left with is money. And how are they going to eat that? Um, and the philosophy is, is that their money you can consume. So if your wealth is based on cocoa beans, you can do wonderful things with it. You can live. But you can't eat gold. And I think that's, that's the point. That's their mentality. Because their economy is based on things that, that, that are lasting and mean something. Um, let's not do a political talk, but our, our money isn't worth anything, okay? You can't eat it. Um, and um, I think that's the point that's being made here. So, archaeological evidence of the cocoa in Mesoamerica. Where we will go to in this article is 5,500 years ago from Ecuador, a place known as Santa Ana, Santa Ana La Flor Florida. And at Santa Ana, Florida, um, archaeologists 
suddenly made a breakthrough in Ecuador at this site. In 1984, um, they, they started to find chemical traces on pottery that indicated in Ecuador um, they were um, consuming uh, chocolate uh, many, many years before the likes of the Aztecs. And then also at the same time, at Mayan sites, they started to find residue on their pottery from 3,000 years ago. Um, and they even started to associate um, cocoa, not, with, not just with the living, but with as these things progress, with those going into the afterlife as well. With one tomb, they excavated a, um, a place known as Rio Azul, um, in Guatemala, a Maya site. They found 15 vessels, um, and the contents of those vessels um, contained residue of chocolate in connection with the royal tomb. Because that was the wealth, not gold. Just, just one quick thing they used to say about uh, the Incan civilization. Um, as Pizarro walked through the uh, streets of Cusco, uh, it was given a different name there, uh, then, as he walked through the streets of Cusco, um, he, he, he was walking on gold. He, he, you had temples which were just full of gold. There, were, there would be little flower gardens, and all the flowers would be made of gold. Um, and Pizarro couldn't understand this. He couldn't understand that gold was everywhere because it was just like um, <coughs> tea bags, okay? There's loads of tea around. Um, and um, their, their, their true wealth was something very, very different. Uh, living life uh, was what the American civilization saw more importantly than gold or things you could consume. <coughs> But going back to uh, the Ecuadorians, you've not only got um, you've not only got the evidence. Going to the mayor, you've not only got the evidence, but you've got it's it, it's shown in their art. Chocolate is shown in their art. So when you when in, in society when you bring something you love into your art, uh, it, it's it's for all to behold. You're preserving it in your art. So that's a really important uh, point. Um, and they, they found that they find, find out uh, that all, it's almost as if it's so important um, and the ability to be able to trace the levels of cocoa in the past that they've, they've, in, they've um, invested in new technology um, <laughs> that can actually detect something known as theobromine, um, uh, which is a nat natural substance which is in cocoa. And whenever you find that, you know that cocoa is being refined and it's being used. Cocoa power, powder, that's, that's where you find theobromine, and that's what the microscopes are looking for. So cocoa powder was also found uh, in beautifully decorated bowls and jars, which indicate that there's chocolate in it as well. Across the Americas. Are these bowls with the powder show that the powder was not only of high quality and so were the bowls. You can imagine that the cocoa um, was thought to be a centerpiece of um, civilizations throughout the Americas. It was part of social gatherings where today um, we may joke about it, we might like a, a glass of wine. To them cocoa was key to their, their worlds. Uh, but it's not just that uh, either. Uh, with the Olmecs themselves, with that earlier civilization that came before the Maya, uh, with the Olmecs, we're actually starting to see that it's used in medicine as well. Medicine. Uh, where we looked, it, it's, it's technically a herb, you know. Um, a ba bananas apparently a herb, so you can look at it technically as a herb. Um, and it's, it's, used, um, it's used in medicinal purposes as well. So not only it's, it's in all levels of their world, it's used to um, cure people and to help people. Wait a minute, sorry to interrupt, but when um, Adrian went to the physio in Lambeth, you're probably not going to believe this, but I won't bore you with all the details. No, please do, if it's but, relevant. Yeah, it is relevant. Um, part of what he had to do to get the muscles in his knee stronger was to eat a square of dark chocolate and it was because he thought it was copper deficient. Oh right. And there's apparently copper 
in dark chocolate, so that's what he did. Mm -hmm. Apart from doing exercise in two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the regular physio in, in, um, in Lambeth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> got that from Chinese. Yeah. This, is, this, is, this is, as we call, quack medicine, but it does work. It did work. Uh, <laughs> and even if it hadn't, you enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah, pa yeah, apparently dark chocolate is good for you. Um, but it wouldn't be good for me. It would be a death sentence. But um, no, it would be, wouldn't it? It would be. It would be. It would be. Um, but um, yes, so it's the, the, the Olmecs we see, um, we, we've got them recipes for, for it being used for um, treatments of different things. But I haven't got any other um, information on that. We've got little other evidence um, other than what I've just mentioned with the Olmecs to do with its medicinal uh, usage. Um, a little bit more, more in chronology. Um, we're recapping a few things, but chucking a couple more things in there. With the mayor, we've got their codices, their, their, their own written history. Um, and they describe the cocoa uh, as being identified um, as a drink of the gods, as we've already mentioned. Uh, it's also identified with other gods uh, in Mayan civilization. Uh, the rain deity Kon, K O N, uh, and it might be relating to the rain deity um, Kon um, because when you look at lots of the ponds, um, it's said that they've got the color of, of blood uh, because it's said that Kon, the rain deity, would rain on the cocoa trees, um, and the red represents his blood, the colour of blood, the colour of red. Now that's really important, um, because to the mayor, the colour red is seen as life, the underworld, death. It's seen as um, essential to their civilization. Uh, for our for our civilization. Um, our predominant colour, I know you'll all disagree with this, but I see it every day, is the colour green. Colour means go. Colour means you could, uh, green means you could do something. Green is life out of the trees and all the rest of it. But red to them is their predominant colour. Um, and if you see the red associated with the cocoa bean, and if you've got beans that you can ground down and they come out as a red paste, you imagine the power that has. Um, so the mayor people gathered once a year to give thanks to um, another god they've got, known as Ex Chuak, um, who they saw as their cocoa god. This is not the Aztec, this is the mayor. The consumption of the chocolate drink is also depicted uh, throughout their pottery. And the mayor seasoned their chocolate by, um, by mixing the roasted cocoa seed paste into a drink with water, chili papers, cornmeal, transfer, transferring the mi mixture repeatedly between pots until the top was covered with a thick foam. Again, we can only guess what that foam tasted like because their cocoa beans would have been different from the cocoa beans that we find throughout Central America today. And why? Because lots of the mature trees that would give the best beans have either been cut down or they've been over-harvested. So to get the exact taste would be fraught um, with, with understanding what they were growing and the height of their trees back in the day. There were many uses for cocoa among the mayor. We have mentioned ceremonies and religious rites, feasts, and festivals, funerary offerings as a tribute. Well, that tribute comes in years later with the Aztecs when they're offering tribute to uh, uh, the conquistadors. Um, medicinal purposes, both cocoa itself and vessels and instruments used for preparation and serving of cocoa were used um, for important gifts and tributes. So when you're given a vessel in Central America, thousand years ago, thousand five hundred years ago. The vessel isn't the important thing, it's the contents. And we've seen that with lots of foodstuffs. We've seen wonderful wooden barrels being created 
Um, and there's bomb butter placed into it. The barrel looks beautiful, right? Sold the barrel, it's the contents which is important. Okay, we have bottles of wine, do we not? And they go through lots of effort to create a nice, really nice glass bottle. We're not interested in the glass bottle. You're drinking the contents, you chuck the glass bottle away. It's, it's, it's the contents which are key. Um, and we haven't mentioned this much. I've alluded to it throughout. But cocoa beans and the sense of them being used for currency. Um, I know some people agree with Brexit and the European Union and all the rest of them in this room, but I'm not really interested in that. But back in the day in the Americas, they had a universal currency, the cocoa bean. That was it. Everybody had cocoa beans from the south to the middle to the north. It was their currency. Okay, That was the first universal currency that spread across two continents. Okay, And we're struggling um, with euros. They invented it all those years ago because it was simple. And I tell you what, right? If the guy over there doesn't want the cocoa beans, you can make it into a drink. Job done. You come back from abroad these days with euros, and lots of people I know just chuck them in the bin, right? So I, I know people. You, you, uh, they said, oh, I've just been on holiday. What do you do with your euros? I just tossed them into the recycling. Um, you wouldn't do that with cocoa beans because they had so many uses. It's a universal currency. Okay? The whole first idea of a currency is that something you can use and, and recycle or whatever. The first idea with currency in this country, gold coins pr produced by the Kenai, uh, uh, the Dubunai tribe and so on. All those earlier tribes, tribal people confederations before the Romans got over here. The coin itself... Um, is not the value, it's what you use the coin for is the value. We've lost what money is about, okay? They knew it. Um, the currency itself, um, as we see through their writings, can be used to purchase anything from avocados to a turkey to purchase in sex. A rabbit, for example, was worth 10 cocoa beans to the mayor. 10. Um, a slave, going after a slave now, that's worth a hundred. And the services of a prostitute between eight to ten beans. Um, according to what type of negotiation you can go into with. This would be protected then, otherwise you could go and pluck your own beans, couldn't you? Yes, it's protected, it, it, it's key. Your, your, your tree mm. is your money pot, okay? Uh, your tree is, is your wealth. And this is where we get into a difficulty, which I can't really examine today, uh, whether this is uh, about people, people who've got power have got a cocoa tree, right? Is it about that? I'm not going any further with that. But it's said to the mayor and their codices that, uh, that the beans themselves are key to the upper classes in, in, the, um, in the service of marriage, okay? To trade beans uh, was something that the upper classes did. So if, 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 if you trade X amount of beans over here, you've got to have the same amount of beans to trade, right? There's no point trading different amounts of beans. This person has, uh, doesn't have enough beans and you're not going to marry them, right? So you can be able to trade the same amount of beans. Which sort of comes into the idea of equality, amongst male and female, but let's not do that. Um, the form of the marriage is the bride gives the bridegroom a small stool painted in colours and gives him cocoa beans and says to him, these I give thee a sign that I accept thee as my husband. And he uh, gives the same amount of cocoa beans, but instead of giving a stool, he gives her some skirts. Oh shut up! This is what they did. But no, you can you can you can understand this. You, there, 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 there is actually an understanding. Okay, there's an understanding. If you haven't got any beans, right? Then I'm not married. Show me your beans. Go on. Well, that's it. I'm serious. No, I'm serious. If you've got no beans, then you're not worth it. Well, that's it. Giving and taking the same amount. 
people give wedding rings, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, but the, the, the point, no, the point is, if you haven't got any beans to give, right? I'm not going to give you mine. I'm going to go off to somebody else, like Peter. Because you need to show your beans. Before. You need to show your beans. What's that? Got to have beans. There's got to have. There's got. Uh, I don't think there's a standard, okay? And don't eat them before you hand them over. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I don't think you're going to be. Oh, moving on. Um, I think there's going to be an acceptable standard, okay? Um, I, I wouldn't pay more than 10 beans for sex. Um, it, 10's enough. Can we do half a bean? <laughs> oh, nobody's going to marry you today. <laughs> you bloody cheapskate. I always knew you were cheap. Uh, talking about cheap, we got a, 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 our, our walk at Sand Mace tomorrow at 7.15 if anyone's interested. Um, I thought I'd chuck down there. Are you coming on that, Dennis? Sam no, Mace, yeah. Yeah, right. okay, Dennis. You can walk over there, Dennis. That's right, it's, uh, it's walking distance. There's a pub not far from there, Dennis. <laughs> so if anyone else is interested, um, then let me know by the end. Seven fifteen tomorrow, Landmates Church. I got your flyer yesterday. Yes, he's been out the boat, hasn't he? Ah, that wasn't me. That was my friend Rhiannon. Oh, I, I, yeah, I met up with I met up with Rhiannon yesterday. Do you remember when we did it now? Yeah, that's right. Broke shape. Shut up. Remember? Was he? Yeah. But we ignored him. You did. Yeah, I did. I was very embarrassed because I hadn't been on where you walked me. <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is, right, then he, then he pays and joins. Well, yeah, so, yeah, I enjoyed it. I Good. It had a bit of excitement, didn't it? It had a bit of excitement. But aren't there lots of yeah, grumpy people? Really, said, yeah, lots of grumpy people around here. There are, there yeah. are. It's unbelievable, isn't it? There are. Grumpy people there. You were allowed. I was only yeah. doing my job. Yeah. Yeah. Ghost detective yeah, working. Are, right. um, it, it was a bit weird the other Thursday. Um, somebody in the room was on that walk, Ellen. Um, anyway, let's carry on. Mayhem, so the Mayan preparation of the cocoa started with cutting open cocoa pods as we know to expose the beans and the fleshy pulp. The beans were left out to f um, ferment for a few days. It's a word for ferment again. In some cases, the beans were also roasted over an open fire in order to add a smoky flavour to it and to get rid of the gooky gunge. Speaking of which... <laughs> Hang on! Can I just get to the end of this? Yes. The beans, the end. The beans then had their husks removed and were ground down into a paste. Since sweeteners were rarely used by the Mayans, they flavoured the cocoa paste with additives like flowers, vanilla pods, and chilies. Um, the vessels, but obviously, what type of chilies are we talking about? The vessel used to serve this chocolate um, was was um, there's a certain word here. I'll bring out another way. Was was specifically meant for the use of cocoa. They were made for drinking uh, this beverage. The vessels um, tended to be decorated, intricate designs and patterns, which tended to only be accessible, my notes say the rich, but I wouldn't agree with that. It's probably a universally acceptable, um, it's, it's for its currency, and everyone's going to be using it. So after that, we're going to go, we're going to look at the Aztecs, we have a few other bits and pieces. Any, any, any questions? If there's any questions, you're going to upset the group. You've got the question. You want to go out the room? Go I'll on. Do a quick one. Yeah, I'll get a few and ask that. Okay. <laughs> but I just I want this will show you a bit. Did you? Yeah. Oh, what was it like? It was beautiful. Oh, good. Right, carry on, Pete. What? <laughs> go on, Peter. <laughs> no, I just want this little clash, but I'm just wondering did, did coffee not come from the same neck of the woods as cocoa? Yes. So you said that's a little strange. But I'm not doing coffee. No, no, no need to. But it's just, yeah. if, if why would the cocoa beans currency so maybe coffee beans? The Spanish state of the coffee beans. Mm. That's another story. That's another story. Right, another so story. Morning, Glory. Let, let's have a break. Uh, and a partridge in a pear tree. On the fifth day of Christmas, my true love said to me. Yeah, we'll do that. Four college birds, three French hens, two turtle doves. I'm Alan Partridge in a pear tree. 
We'll try and work that one out. Does it? I will see that out. It doesn't necessarily mean to be you. It doesn't mean to be you. I love you all the time. I see you in the dark. Is it definitely your car? Yeah, it looks. Yeah, it is my car. By the way. But anyway, I'm gonna. If you're not the driver. If I'm not the driver. More about part two and the wonderful strutting and stomping around to tell you more about chocolate in the Aztec world. By the 1400s, the Aztec Empire took over a sizable part of Mesoamerica. Uh, they were not able to grow cocoa themselves. Now that is very interesting, very interesting. Uh, it might be because um, it, there was an overuse of cocoa planting. Um, there was devastation across the crops. There was some disease. There's a lot saying that most of the cocoa um, for the Aztec world had to be imported in from other areas of America. So that may tell you something very, very interesting. I just presume they got it from the forest and they didn't actually cultivate it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 But by that by that stage, by that stage, there had been climatic um, the disasters, which, which ha and there was there was heavy agriculture, and lots of the old jungles had been cut down. So that would have a huge effect. Um, yeah, a, a huge population. The Aztecs had a huge population, so all that deforestation would have an adverse effect on the cocoa. Yes, I'm, we're not saying for one minute they didn't grow their own, but obviously mm -hmm. the large bulk of it was being brought in. Um, and all the areas that the Aztec conquered um, um, were ordered to, um, as tribute, offer the um, Aztec um, city, Tlaxcala, um, 
um, large tributes of cocoa beans. So they were they were conquering more. It's almost as if it was it was a tax. So they were um, conquering new territories which weren't as wealthy as the Aztecs. So there was obviously loads of cocoa trees, and that was their tribute. It wasn't gold. It was cocoa beans. Um, so it puts a different it puts a different idea on on, on how these people um, um, thought of the world. Okay, what they how they thought of the world was there are a lot more um, important things in life than gold. So the cocoa bean, which which could have been the vessel of lots of things, was key to Aztec. Um, empire building the cocoa bean became a form of currency naturally we've discussed this and the spanish conquistadors left records of the value of the cocoa bean to the aztecs for example they wrote that um, um for the aztecs not the maya now the aztecs are a little bit further on now one um, eight six hundred years ago the aztecs are uh, they, well, by the time the conquistadors got there in 1519, 1520, 1521, they, they were describing that 100 beans could purchase a canoe, a f a canoe filled, um, so 100 beans could purchase a canoe filled um, with water, um, fresh water, um, or a turkey hen, right? I know that sounds unusual, but um, a canoe filled, that's the description, 100 beans could purchase a canoe filled with fresh water or a turkey hen um, and I think that says a little bit more that it's not about gold it's about produce turkey hens really fat turkey hens would be very valuable as well for example if you buy a turkey for Christmas now you're not going to have much change of a hundred quid are you yeah. 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 yes depends where you get it um, the Aztecs associated cocoa uh, with their own god, um, Quetzalcoatl, which we've mentioned on the board, who they believed had been condemned by the other gods for sharing chocolate with humans. You see, a god sharing chocolate with humans. Can you see that there's a link there between Adam and Eve, the Adam and Eve myth, there's all these sort of similarities. Um, unlike the mayor of the Yucatan, the Aztecs drank chocolate cold. Um, so the mayor drank it warm, the Aztecs drank it cold. Now, I don't, don't really know what that's about. It was consumed for a variety of um, purposes. We mentioned the idea of the aphrodisiac. Um, it was seen as a treat for men after battle. They'd be treated to a beverage of chocolate for fighting. Um, and this is interesting. You want to mention about the United States soldiers being given a ration of these beans, yeah. right? The Aztec soldiers were also given a ration of these beans. There's a weird, weird thing there. There's a weird link which you can't really work out. Maybe energy or something. To do with energy, yes. Um, here's a little bit more. What I don't want to do is, is look at chocolate in, in our world because there's an article, a couple of articles I want to do quickly. So, anyway. So Christopher Columbus, when he, when he first got to that part of the Americas in uh, 1502, um, he, was, um, he was offered a large amount of cocoa beans, which he didn't really know what to make of. Um, this was in 1502. Uh, these were on the islands um, off the central um, peninsula of Yucatan, where Mexico is. So this was Christopher Columbus. Cocoa beans, didn't know what to make of it. But they were really discovered... Uh, by Fernando Cortes uh, in the 1519-1520 and he described these as um, almonds um, and in, in his sort of uh, translated words he wrote for when they were brought on board ship together with their goods I observed that when any of these almonds fell they all stopped to pick them up um, and he describes as if their own eyes had fallen out. So he observed the cocoa beans were, were, were so important to them. Do you know, for example, okay, um, um, some, somebody drops a coin in a street and somebody's eyes go, oh my God, there's a coin on the street. Like that type of thing, your eyes drop. You know, mine would anyway, because I'm from Barry. Um, 
But you know, it's that idea that they were so valuable, he, he discovered that. Um, when a few years earlier, when Christopher Columbus had introduced cocoa beans to the Spanish court, they didn't know what to make of them. <coughs> um, but yeah, but when we when we think about Cortez, we, we also think um, as he observed in the court of Montezuma in 1519. Um, it was wrote of the event that he met Montezuma. Um, from time to time they served him, Montezuma, in cups of pure gold, a certain drink made from cocoa. It was said that it gave one power over women, but this I never saw, because I tried it out. I did see them bring in more than 50 large pitchers of cocoa, large vessels, full of cocoa, um, um, with froth in it, and, and he drank some of it, the women serving with great reverence. And a Jesuit priest wrote of Mexico, not so long after that, he wrote, loathsome to such as are not acquainted with it, he's talking about the beverage, it having a scum or froth that it very unpleasant taste Yet, it is drank very much esteemed among the Indians, um, obviously the Aztecs, where with they feast noble men who pass through their country. The Spaniards, both men and women that are accustomed to the country, are very greedy of this chocolate. They say they might make diverse sorts of it, some hot, some cold, and some temperate and put therein much of that chili, yeah. So that's chili, yeah. They make paste thereof, the which they say is good for the stomach and against Katara. Um, I've had a blocked up nose for days, I don't know why, but that's life. Um, finally on this bit, after the Spanish conquest of the Aztecs, chocolate was imported to Europe. At the beginning, Spaniards would use it as a, a medicine to treat illness such as abdominal pain um, because they felt the bitterness um, aided the abdominal pain. But sweetened, however, it was transformed not from, a, from being a medicine into being something that you could consume. It quickly, it quickly became a court favourite. It was still served as a beverage, but the addition of sugar or honey counteracted the natural bitterness. The Spaniards initially intended to recreate the original taste of the Mesoamerican chocolate by adding similar spices, but it didn't catch on because as we know, sweet chocolate is very sweet indeed. Um, so what I'd like to do now is I, I've got some, a couple of articles of the week um, and then we'll call it a day. Um, we'll call it Thursday. Do you see what I did there? Mm. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that, 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 yeah. I, I, I got questions, can't even answer. Well, can I ask you? Yeah, not too bad. What? I wonder if the peasants drank this chocolate as well. This is the thing where I, I would say that they did because it was a, it was a staple. Just, just, just obviously two points here. Okay, there's point one. Okay, here's another. My jokes today are terrible, aren't they? Um, well, well you, you've got to put up with this for the Christmas meal. Appar apparently, um, Natalie's going to give um, you a deposit, Peter. What? Yeah. Yeah. I've got some parcel paper, though. All oh, right. The lovely Michelle has to come to the Christmas feast. Well, uh, well, after, after a bit of bondage. Um, archaeologists find traces of 2,500 year old chocolate. Now, this. Um, is there a site um, in the Akatan Peninsula? Now they, they found 2,500 years ago that instead of being um, a liquid, um, it was a condiment or almost a solid um, consumed by the peoples of Central America 2,500 years ago. Experts have long thought cocoa beans and pods were mainly used as a beverage, but by crushing them, making them into a paste, we know that they were consumed in similar ways to the way we consume them today. This is the first time it has been found on a plate. They found it on a plate used for serving food, not 
in a drinking container. It is unlikely that, that it was ground on the plate, but it was obviously added to the plate after being ground into a pestle and mortar. Now that was a report from not so uh, long ago, okay? Um, this one again, and the pest resistance about Ecuador comes at the end. It says about the various chroniclers um, with the Aztecs, and this is about Pablo Balito, quickly, so if we can get this off. Can you just stop mucking around with my, my thing in the jigs, um, Alan? He's always pulling my plugs out. Here we go. Excellent. Okay. Right. Uh, before we come on, um, it mentions about Pablo Benito quickly. So we'll, we'll just we'll just do that bit. When it comes up. Um, light. Good. That's from a carry on film. Carry on um, camping. Good. Right. We've done that little bit there. Where we've got that symbol there. Uh, the glyph. Um, associated with cocoa, um, and if we, sorry about the light a minute, so we've got those beakers there from Pablo Benito, again I can't enlarge that, these cylinders were found in the 1920s, which we showed you an illustration of earlier on, uh, vessels similar to those used in Mesoamerica, so, so they had, across the whole of the Americas, they've got these specific beakers, now, so not only, not only is, um, not only are the beams travelling, the fashion's travelling, okay, um, which is akin to your question earlier on about the Celts. These, these are not, this is not an invasion of people, it's just ideas spreading, right? Um, which they give a silly name to. Um, so that's my answer to your question. So the, these, these are being found in this type of site, Pablo Benito. Um, and these were found in the 1920s. And, and they've been analysing some of these more recently and they found that they, that, um, they, they've got evidence of a drinking beverage being consumed. And finally, this. Archaeologists find earliest chocolate ingredients in Ecuador. And this is what we're going to fi finish on. Now, they, they like their chocolate in Ecuador, as you can see there. <laughs> there you go. That's yeah. Kathy in the middle. <laughs> what, which one's Kathy in the middle? Kathy's the one in the middle. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. She looks a bit disheveled. On the edge of the Amazon River Basin in southeast Ecuador, a team of archaeologists and other researchers have recently discovered that the origins of the world's chocolate supply dates to, uh, uh, let's round it up to 5,500 years ago. This is in Ecuador. Since cocoa or the seed uh, of a tropical evergreen tree is well known to have figured pr pr predominantly, uh, prominently it says, and predominantly in, in Olmec, Mayan and Aztec cultures, Researchers have long assumed that it originated in Central America. But by working in Ecuador at the site of the upper Amazon, known as Santa Ana, La Florida, in Ecuador, is the earliest known archaeological site belonging to the Chinchipi culture, which existed in the highlands of Ecuador as far ago as 7,500 years ago. So this evidence looks at around 5,500 years ago. Um, so they got the domestication of the plants and various animals, um, they've got evidence of maize, beans, sweet potato, chili, and cocoa associated with this wonderful site, the Santa Ana in Ecuador. The jewelry, stone bowls, ceramics. Um, and what they've simply done um, to test the presence of theobromina or broma, uh, which is a, a resi residual signature of cocoa on the ceramics, which they've actually found um, at this site. Um, in Ecuador, they said we, we analysed artefacts from the tombs, middens and the sunken plaza floor, construction fill deposits and a ceremonial hearth and they, and they were finding um, evidence of chocolate. Um, 28 residue samples across a small area of the site um, with the characteristics um, of Themo Broma um, and um, it says that 6 out of the 19 artefacts which included low-fired pots whose porous nature retained this chemical likely during the processing of cocoa beans. So it's being found across the site. So they've done a DNA sequencing, okay, to try and find the origins of where the cocoa comes from. Um, given the date of this Santa Ana uh, samples, the identification of the thermo thermobromina uh, cocoa uh, trace at this site means 
It is the earliest archaeological evidence of cocoa use in the New World. So it didn't originate in Central America at all. It originated in South America, which, which changes lots of things. So it moved south to north, and it's ever growing popular and popular over thousands of years. So it's important to these people over thousands of years. Cocoa was so popular, it was cultivated in large plantations by these people because they had the conditions and formed the main ingredient in frothy chocolate drinks that were consumed by the elite during festivals. We don't know it's being consumed by the elite. It could have been consumed by anybody. Um, we don't know. We don't know of any writing from these people, but we've got the traces. While cocoa seemingly did not play as paramount a role, it's saying in the economic or spiritual life of South America. So we know. But at this site, it is possible um, that it, became, it was very important at the beginning. The importance waned as sort of. The, the ideas of cocoa started to move further north, but they're seeing that um, it's being used um, in different contexts at the site, ritualistic context, domestic context. It's an important source of food, drink, medicine, stimulants, and ceremonies across the site. And in one moment, one excavation, um, helping us understand this in 2018, tells us that the use of chocolate goes back 1,500 years from where we thought it was first used in Central America. And these dating, these dating types of things are changing all the time. So, oh, and one last thing, this, this, all, this, this is one last thing that I just chucked in at the last minute on Tuesday. I like this. So, America, Halloween, um, candy, but a large use of chocolate at the festivities of Halloween. And that idea of giving chocolate gifts at Halloween probably originates uh, back as far as 5,500 years ago. <clears throat> because it's a gift given at the time of festivities. And Halloween, whatever you say about it, is a festivity. East Ricks. East, well, yeah, that goes without saying. Aqueducts, uh, well, ne never mind. It, Easter, Easter, chocolate, Easter. So it, um, it's very important there. And. Um, and I, I managed to not pick on Dennis once today, so that's good. I'm proud of myself there. You'll get it on Tuesday, Dennis. Um, and are there any questions? I, I think I've, I've, done, I've, I've done as much as I could do. Mm. And enjoy your toilet. Very cool. I will, and enjoy yeah. your clock. I'll enjoy stuff. And, and put, use your Manchester United token with pride. Um, and if there's no more questions. I've got a thought. Go on. You've got a thought. Right, let's go. I can think of like three Floridas that would have cropped up again today. What do you think of that thing, Florida? Flower. Flora. Flora. Because we've got a strap of flowers. Strap of flowers. Family has a flower. How come you've got a strap of flowers? Because we're not, we're not spoke up here. Who's that to you? No, it means flower. Or flora. 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 flora is animal. Flora. There's also the, the island of Flora. Oh, get too heavy now. What wouldn't they there's also the island of Flora. <laughs> um, right, if there's no more questions, next week we are going to be doing... I should mention... Go for it, mention. I was reading the accounts about coffees, and actually it could also start with chocolate, but it's genetically determined whether you actually like the bitter taste. Yeah. I've inherited it. I've definitely inherited it, because yeah. I like my I coffee now. So right. <laughs> I absolutely love sprouts. We had chocolate covered did, sprouts yeah. for Christmas yeah. last year. Well, sprouts, you've got, you've got yeah. you've got well, it's part of a Christmas meal. No, they were they were dried out sprouts. Yeah. Right. They, they were cooked and dried out sprouts, and you had chocolate on them. They were lovely. What was that? But then again, I regretted it afterwards. What what Michelle and my son do at Christmas, right? They they get me drunk and they give me chocolate and see what happens. <laughs> it's not nice. Good game, good game. Because basically Michelle does banana wine. It has a really bad effect, yeah. Yeah, banana wine, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just don't go there. Right. Um if if there's no more questions. I'd like to thank you for all turning up today. And uh, just a reminder that those that are interested on the 19th of December, we have our, uh, not 19th, 
Um, we, we have our other do, the other archaeology can we do on the 29th of December, which is a Saturday at the end of the year. I want to know who's interested in going along to that. It's a Langan Community Hall. Um, it might be a good idea. Um, it, it's like a, it's like a, it's like a, um, a party type thing. You can, it's, 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 it's in the evening at seven o'clock. Bring, bring friends, enemies, people you don't like, just bring them along. It's a party type thing. It's a disco, karaoke. You can see me and Anne um, singing, all sorts of things. Might. Yeah, you might. Um, it's at the Langan Community Hall on the 29th, Saturday, at the end of December. Why is it that I'm going to Oh, because it just is. Yeah, they are. They're rebels. Um, and, and it might be wise, right? Because. Um, it, it might it might be right. wise um, that you could think of a little project that we could um, do in Lanswick Major because we've got stuff going on in Barry um, and in Sully, yeah. various other things. Right, so there's no more questions. Um, I want a little nibble before you go, Ellen, right? So I'm gonna just dive in there. Um, if there's no more questions, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Daddy.